past years, many people talked about the mystery of gold farmers and their operations in game. Jagex is banning hundreds of thousands of gold farming accounts every week. How is it possible that gold farmers create so many accounts over and over again to continue farming high level NPCs like Zolra or Warcraft? How is it possible that gold farmers are able to create and train faster accounts to the end game than Jagex is able to ban these accounts? While trying to solve the complex of gold farming businesses, People usually missed off an insight into the hidden underground operations. People don't know how it really looks like under the surface. I want to change that. That's why today I have something really special for you. For the first time ever, you will see an in-depth insight about an account building strategy for professionals back ago in the time I used to gold farm for money. While I'm trying to give you an insight into how we gold farmers used to build out our accounts, in the same time I hope that some of you can learn something out of this to build your own alternative accounts efficiently and easily to provide gold to your main. Let's Alright perfect. So what you can see here is an unfinished account meant for Warcraft or Rune Dragons. First of all I want to show you this account. Here you can see the skills. The combat stats are already pretty high trained. 92 in attack, 91 in strength and 89 in defense. We would train the account to 95 attack, 95 strength and at least 90 defense. Like I said this account was meant for rune dragons and warcraft and obviously you know you need a really high combat for them. So after that let's check here the range level with 85. This is also pretty high trained and for that I must tell you we've always focused on meleeing the rune dragons. We didn't plan to use the dragon hunter crossbow for range. Instead we wanted to use the dragon hunter lance com for common melee. And then of course magic with 85 as well. Later in the video I will explain why we still train these combat stats so high although we didn't need them especially for our end goal. And then of course 70 prayer which is really important here. I mean here for Piety or Piety, no idea how to pronounce it. <laughs> and then if you check here all the other skills, all of them are basically only trained because of one reason. Questing. To unlock our end goal, walk off all the rune dragons, you need obviously to do Dragon Slayer 2. And for that you need 200 quest points. And that literally means doing most of the quests. For example here receipt for disaster, we, we didn't do it yet, we don't need it to unlock Dragon Slayer 2. Of course, if you want to have Barrow's Gloves, you need to do it. Like I said, this account isn't finished, so we would probably have done that in the future. But yeah, obviously we stopped. Obviously I stopped training this account once I start with YouTube because I quit gold farming for good. So all those quests were necessary for Dragon Slayer 2. And that's why we trained all those other skills. Just the combat skills were important for us for the end goal to fight Warcraft or the Rune Dragons. But all the other skills are basically useless for us. We just did them to do those quests. I'm explaining this in detail because our strategy we de developed over the years was purely meant therefore to create accounts with the lowest effort as possible. You don't want to do any not necessary things on this account. Instead you only want to do the really really important things. Over the years of account farming and building so many of accounts to farm gold with or to sell for a customer, we developed our own strategy how we could produce them fast, efficiently and AFK. You must think like that. On one account we did work have to farm gold so we could earn like 80 to 100 dollar per month to have enough money to eat. But you must assume that this account would get banned after maybe one or two months of playing. And then you would have to recreate another account. And now just think just about how long it would take you to create an DS2 account. So an account which is ready to farm Warcraft again. If you play every day for 10 or 12 hours, it probably will take you between 1 and 2 months. That means after your account got banned, you had to recreate it. And this took you 1 to 2 months and this meant you couldn't earn one single dollar within this time. That's why we started to train backup accounts simultaneously while we did farm gold. That's why we developed a strategy which had basically two points. Training as much as possible AFK for the combat skills and then the second important point was to be able to train multiple accounts at the same time. But now let's talk a bit about 
how we start actually with our own account. So as you can see here in my inventory, I have a few really important items for the start. But the very first thing you do on the account is doing a well-known waterfall quest to get up to level 30 attack and 30 of strength. Everybody knows it, it's really useful. Straight after that, you go to the GE and buy those kind of items. Our first spot is here the Sandcrab Island. First we will focus on training our melee stats higher. To be precise, to 32 attack, 32 strength and 32 defense. Same applies to range and magic. But as you can see, this place is really, really crowded. Bots and service providers. These people are most likely real players and no bots. They are creating those poor accounts with zero defense and a certain combination of attack and strength for PvP. I did those accounts plenty of times already. Really common was one attack, 80 strength and one defense. The 80 strength is meant for, for an Obi Mola account. But however, like I said, this place is really crowded. And this is a huge problem for us because most of the time we will be fighting sand crabs with this account. That's why I recommend you to do two quests. If you are planning to do an alternative account to farm gold for your main, you need to do two quests. Client of Current, which is really easy, it takes maybe 50 minutes and Depth of the Spur. For that you need some agility, but it's totally worth it. After that you can straight use here your skills necklace which is really important and that's why I brought it teleporting to the woodcutting guild. This teleport is really important because it brings us right, right next to the dungeon here. Here you have a really really unpopular sand crab spot. You barely find here any players. Like now there's one guy here. It's enough to hop maybe one or two worlds and then you have here a totally empty place where you can train. Once you are here you will train your attack and strength to 42 and defense as well. Then you can just hop to range and magic, doing there the same. And why we need 42? I will show you now. Here we are at the pest control. So this is a really really important place. Not to train our melee stats here, instead we need to farm a few points with the mini game to get the pest control outfit. Where do I get that again? Ah here, oh no, no. <laughs> ah here, the white knight, he's selling it. So what you need here is the rope, the Mage helm. helm, the top, the gloves and the ranger helm. You don't need the melee helm, it's useless, for us at least. You need to spend around 20 hours with your low level combat stats you will have at this state. It's not really a cable but totally worth it because you need it to grind out range and magic a bit later. Let me get it really quickly. So the reason is pretty simple. Obviously when you here check the set bonus, you can read it. When wearing mm -hmm. top, rope and gloves and match helmet, you will receive 45% bonus to your magic accuracy. This is absolutely mind blowing. Nearly 50% more accuracy in our magic. That's crazy. And now you have to think back why this is so important. Of course, if the enemy has a high defense level, then this doesn't mean so much. If you keep in mind that we are training at the sand crabs, this is extremely huge for us. You will literally always hit, you will never hit zero. And this is really really important for your DPS obviously. Same applies to the range set. This is a bit different, here you get a bonus from 10% in your damage and accuracy. So it's a bit different, but it's still really really good for us. So the 20 hours are really worth it to invest. By the way, I'm explaining this here in depth because I want you to know how we used to build our unique accounts and how we thought it's really efficient in this way. But in the same time, you can learn something from it because maybe you find something which is interesting for you, for your alternative account to maybe farm rune dragons or also warcraft. But for example, this account you can also like literally use it in the same way for rune dragons. You just need to maybe train the melee stats a bit higher like I said to 95 but then it's a really really good AFK method to farm rune dragons. And maybe you can get a few hints how to do it for your own account. So what you're basically seeing here now is the ready to go armor set to, to train at the sand crabs. You can obviously equip uh, some kind of boots to improve your DPS too. And here's probably a controversial point, the magic shortbow compared to normal darts. In my point of view, magic shortbow is stronger and brings more DPS. I think I 
calculated it once, but I'm not really sure about this point. So definitely leave a comment if you think darts are more DPS. Of course, uh, as the cape, you use the, um, the others back. For that, you need obviously also to do the quest once you can. And then you can use basically the strongest arrows you can afford to buy because you don't lose them. And in this way, we just trained our range to like literally 85. And this is a pretty fast and, and of course the most AFK way you can train range. Same goes now with the mage set. You just equip here the smoke battle staff and use firebolt. You just have to buy chaos runes then. Of course you need some GP to do this, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. And then you also just go here to straight up to level 80, 85 and that's it. Okay guys, there we go. Now to the melee stats. As you can see, I'm wearing a full OB set with the Berserker necklace and Dragon Boots. The Obsidian armor equipped with a Obsidian weapon and then also together with the Berserker necklace is absolutely OP. If you check here the stats, you have a melee bonus of 79 and obsidian armor boosts your accuracy and your melee strength again for 10% and the huge point is that this stacks with the berserker necklace which gives you additionally 20% and this leads to a crazy amount of accuracy and a really really high max set. So this combination is from my point of view absolutely crazy. You don't need to equip the obsidian cape, it's just for defense. The shield is indeed important because you get, I think, yeah, here some melee strength. You can grade up the dragon boots, of course, but that costs again really much. And then you have the granite gloves. You can use a rag bracelet, but the granite gloves are basically the same. Because at that point you don't have any better gloves like rune gloves or barrel gloves. Of course, the dragon defender would lead to much more DPS, like barrel gloves would do too. But always keep in mind at that this stage we want as much to AFK as possible. Later when we start all the quests and start to focus on this account, then it makes sense to do those things because they are also later important for if you want to farm rune dragons or warcraft. Another huge point is that this equipment isn't really expensive because you also have to keep in mind that our accounts got frequently banned. Like you trained all the way towards level 90 in melee and then suddenly you got banned, even though you didn't sell gold on this account. But of course, they knew your IP address and all this, so they could think of that this account also want to gold farm in the future. So Jagex system is sometimes really good. And this is the reason why you can't buy really expensive items on your account, because all this GP would be lost too. As soon as you got your combat levels trained high enough, you can start to work on the different things on the account like finishing all the quests for barrel gloves and preparing for these two. Also you get things like the dragon defender. After you started questing, there's also an alternative towards the sand crabs method. You can start to doing nightmare zone, which is basically the same and you get even more XP per hour. So at the sand crabs, there's the problem that there are only four sand crabs and until they spawn again, you waste an important time. So the XP per hour is kept at like 70 to 80 K per hour, but it's still really good. And that's why we usually only did this because it's easier for the nightmare zone. You have to do certain quests first but of course it's a bit more afk because you can stay there like hours sometime but we used to have good experience with the sand crabs because of the barn raids and when you do all this stuff basically all those quests and then at the end you finish ds2 your stats will look like pretty much the same like here because i haven't and then you have some funny things and really unique like hunter level 9 Although other skills are pretty high trained already like the combat stats. Slayer is also not necessary for a classic gold farm account because usually you don't farm slayer monsters because this takes way way too much time to get to level 90 slayer or so and it's totally not AFKable. That's because I wouldn't recommend this if you try to build a normal alternate account to farm gold for your main. So to sum everything up. When we built our accounts, we did a lot of sand crabs. We abused their low defense to never hit zeros and at the same time we pushed our strength to have a decent max hit. After that you could easily finish all the necessary missions for DS2 and all the other necessary stuff 
to unlock some things. For all the questing, I recommend the optimal quest guide. With that, you won't do anything not necessary to build your alternative account. And I think that's it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment and a like. And if you are interested in such things again, and if you found this video interesting, there are plenty of other accounts we build too frequently, like 99 thieving accounts to farm monster farmers and stuff like that. I hope you got some tips to build your rune dragon out or another account to farm gold for your main. I hope to see you really soon again. Bye.